Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Etho and welcome back to another episode of the Let's Play series. That's right, we're finally back here after like a three month break, I think it's been. <laughs> oh boy, longest break I've ever taken on YouTube. And I'm finally starting to get some free time again. It feels good. I'm finally able to play some video games again. I've really missed them. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but I'm actually a bit of a gaming addict. I love video games very much. Don't just do it for work. <laughs> it's like, it, it's, uh, I think they're the greatest form of entertainment, honestly. Uh, so it really kills me when I can't, can't play them. But uh, yeah, finally got time to play some games again. I want to get back into making videos. And uh, yeah, I think the goal for today, guys, is going to be a little bit of a different episode. I mostly just want to tell you like where I've been, what's been going on, what's the situation, and what does it mean going forward. So it's going to be a little bit less of a, hey, let's play Minecraft, let's make progress episode. It's going to be a bit more about me today. I hope you can stand me. <laughs> hope you'll stand by me. Uh, yeah, thanks for all your patience too, by the way, guys, uh, for uh, waiting while I haven't been uploading here. Really appreciate that. But yeah, let's get into it here. We might just go caving or something. Uh-huh. Yeah, so maybe I'll just give you guys like a quick version of what happened first here. Um, so I did make a couple tweets about this. Uh, basically, the reason I've been gone is because both my parents were having some serious uh, health issues and it became clear to me that, uh, you know, I got to step in and help them out for, for a while. Uh, the while ended up turning into something much more serious and uh, longer. <laughs> uh, I hate to say it, but yeah. Um, so, thankfully, my mom has fully recovered from her issues. She's like pretty much where she was before, so I'm happy about that. But my dad, uh, we did find out eventually that he had uh, cancer, brain cancer. And it was a very aggressive, very... Um, difficult to treat form of cancer, so he did unfortunately end up passing away uh, about a month ago now, and uh, I've just been trying to do what I can to help my mom out during that time to try relieve whatever stress I can for her and help her deal with uh, like all the all the other annoying stuff she has to deal with in addition to like losing her mate. Right? <laughs> uh, it kind of sucks, but like. You don't just have the, the cancer to deal with and like the all the suckiness with that, but it's like, oh, guess what? All these companies that you're paying bills to, you have to now switch the name and, uh, you know, it's like, oh, the bank, the banks want to freeze your bank account and then you got all these. Oh, there's just so much stuff that has to be dealt with. It's It really sucks. All at the exact time. You got to plan a funeral and I just wanted to do whatever I could to help her with that. Uh, so that's what I've been doing most recently. Did I mention taxes? Oh, that's right. Taxes. Everybody's favorite thing. Oh, we, how we look forward to it every year. Yeah, all this happened during tax season as well. Uh -huh. So not only do I get to do my taxes, oh, I get to do my mom's taxes and my dad's taxes. And uh, my dad used to spend like two weeks doing his taxes. He has some of the most complicated taxes you could ever imagine. They have a very odd living and business situation um with a lot of different like tax breaks and like <laughs> complications revolving around that and uh yeah unfortunately he also had brain cancer so very early on in his sickness fortunately a lot of information went with him um he couldn't really uh recall much like he lost a lot of his memory he lost his cognitive ability pretty much that's like your reasoning ability your ability to form th complex thoughts and, and that kind of thing so i've pretty much been trying to do all this stuff blind without like all the information i need as well because i couldn't get it from him uh <laughs> so that's uh that's taken up a lot of time eventually i did end up taking it to accountant uh first few accountants did not want to touch it but then eventually found one that would but I still had to take care of a few things like um, never heard of an NR4 slip before but now I know what it is <laughs> it's like I get a, a letter in the mail from the the government it's like we want our, mo our money you haven't paid your remittance yet why haven't you paid your remittance it's like what on earth is a remittance I've never heard this word before uh, eventually found out like I called all his contacts it's like 
yeah, he's got some business in the States that he has to wire money to people and fill out an, an, an NR4. And it's like you try to enter that into a tax program and it's it doesn't even exist in Canadian taxes. So it's like, okay, how do I enter this when doing taxes? You can't. It's, it's been a tough couple months, guys. Trust me. I'm doing good, though. Don't worry. I, I'm, I'm a tough guy. I can deal with this kind of stuff. How do you deal with a complex, difficult problem? You take it one step at a time. You start at the beginning. And it's more like... Um, the way I view life is there's no problem that you can't really do. It's like you don't want to put the effort in to do it. Like any complex problem, if you spend enough time on it, eventually you'll, you'll work it out. If you figure out the details, right? You got to just figure out the details little by little. Eventually the problem makes more and more sense until you can solve it. Um, or you just take it to account it's, once you give up. <laughs> Oh, horse armor. Yeah, so with my dad, it took us quite a while to figure out, like, what was wrong with him. It started off, like, pretty innocent. He got a condition called water under the knee, which is, like, where there's fluid build up behind the kneecap and uh, you get a lot of joint pain and it really hurts to walk and stuff. So he was pretty much couch bound for, for a few weeks from that. But we didn't really think too much of it because it was something he got two years earlier and he just kind of got over it, right? And same with this, he was he was starting to get over it, right? But then he started getting brain fog. It's like, oh, that's weird. But then he got digestive issues. <laughs> we noticed he wasn't drinking water. It's like, what's what's going on? How are all these things related? Like water under the knee, brain fog, digestive issues. We were taking him to the doctor. The doctor would would check out his organs and his blood, and they'd be like, oh yeah, he's fine. Nothing wrong here. Send him home. He'll get better. And we had a really hard time, I think, because of what's going on in the world as well, to to take him seriously. You know, like, no, he's got some some serious problems here. We, you should really take a closer look. But they didn't really know what to do either. I don't think. Um, it wasn't until eventually it's like it got to the point where he wasn't drinking water, so we had to take him to the hospital to get IV fluid put in him. We did that twice, and then it's like, we're not taking him home <laughs> until you guys look at him and figure out what's wrong. Because uh, they were going to send him home again without looking at him. It's like, come on, guys. Uh, my mom said, like, we're not taking him. <laughs> she just put her foot down. It's like, and we had this theory that maybe he had a mini stroke or something. Um, so my mom mentioned that, and that's when they started to pay more attention. That's when it's like, oh, this might be serious. They gave him a CAT scan, and that's when they saw it. So that's kind of how we figured it out. So very, very stressful, like, when you don't know what's wrong. Sucks when you find out, but at least, you know, you're not so worried, like, I got to do something to take care of this, you know? It's like, oh, that's just the way it is kind of thing after that. Um, So then after that, it was like, okay, let's make the most of the time we got left and family dinners and lots of friends came over um that kind of thing spend quality time as as best as we can with them so we did that for a while and his condition was just getting worse and worse right um then it's like it got to the point where we kind of had to watch him um part of the brain that was affected was it, it was the frontal lobe and that's like uh impulse control so we just get these random ideas that, oh, I got to go outside in the middle of the night <laughs> and take care of something, right? Like, this has to get fixed right now. It's like, oh, man. And he could barely walk at that point. So I was like, you got to keep an eye on him or he's going to go outside sometime and not come back kind of thing. And then finally it got to the point where he couldn't really walk anymore. He was bed bound. And we had to make the decision, like, do we take him in for hospice care? Or do we try to take care of them at home and just have nurses come in and, and teach us what to do? Uh, we weren't, uh, again, because of the way things are in the world right now, if we did take him to hospice, uh, he would only be allowed two visitors ever. <laughs> like, only two visitors, the same two. So it's like, that's not going to work, right? And he, he was more comfortable at home. So we ended up doing home care. I learned how to become a nurse for a while. 
uh, how to administer IV and medicine and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, so I helped my mom out with that as best as I could. Uh-huh. Yeah, so I've had a pretty busy last few months here, guys. Honestly, the last three months have kind of felt like a year to me. <laughs> so much stuff has happened. Uh, it's been pretty crazy. I've learned how to do a lot of new things during this time as well, which has been at least one good thing that's come out of all this, out of the Seki situation. Of uh, doing a lot of physical work, so I've been getting good exercise and, like, you know, Remember, I kind of complained in the past I wasn't really doing cardio. <laughs> Not anymore. I got I got, uh, I got my cardio in, guys. Oh, boy. So, like, for example, uh, one thing that happened early on, like when he had the water under the knee issue when I was first starting out, um, he was, uh, like, he could walk around for maybe 30 minutes a day, and he would use that time to go check out his business property. And just do a walk around, make sure everything's okay there. And I guess because of his condition, like he was doing the walk around, he was spotting problems, but he didn't realize they were problems. <laughs> and uh, one thing that happened is uh, a couple of his buildings caved in because uh, it's middle of winter, Canadian winter, as you know, um, lots of snow, and. Uh, the weight on the building just caved him in. And normally he would just push that snow himself. I don't know if he was just like not feeling well and thought he could leave it for another day or or what. Like uh, it's something I've helped him with in the past too. Like I've cleared it for him before. He could have just asked me. <laughs> I think uh, I think he just didn't realize it was a problem. And uh, so they caved in a couple buildings. Um, so I had to take care of that. I had to like rebuild walls to re-secure the buildings. I had to, I spent two days pushing snow off of, uh, all his other buildings, <laughs> make sure nothing else caved in. And it was like minus 30 degree weather. And it was just like the worst time you could ever imagine. Just freezing my butt off, uh, pushing so much snow, like using all my might possible to to do it um so I, i've been getting a good workout with things uh also the other thing is one of his businesses he kind of put off uh, his customers like we told him like just leave it for a while because you're not feeling well and you'll do it when you get better kind of thing and he never got better right so um He kind of got backed up with his business and <laughs> it came, it kind of hit a breaking point where it's like all of a sudden is uh, the customers wouldn't wait anymore. It's like, okay, they're coming in, they're coming in. Someone's got to deal with them and he can't. So I took over the business for him. Um, and that's kind of taken two or three hours out of my day every day for the last uh, three months here. Uh, basically my goal with that is to run out of stock like he had a bunch of stock on hand of things to sell and once that's all gone the business is getting shut down and then that's a huge weight lifted off of my plate because i'm still managing that and it's still <laughs> taking a bunch of time and it's very physical work like one of the big jobs is loading people's trucks for them and it's like you gotta move thousands of pounds of stuff every day like you, you can use machinery to get the pellets up to the the trucks but then you gotta lift the product off the, the pellets to the trucks manually and it's like a, a massive workout uh and because there was so much business all at once no break no rest I actually ended up uh, getting injured a little bit with my wrists i always thought you know as the thing that was going to get me carpal tunnel was playing video games right <laughs> nope uh i just overdid it like moving things and it got to the point where my wrists just started burning like crazy uh, and uh, I could hardly use a mouse after that even like I tried it's like uh oh is this carpal tunnel did I get carpal tunnel because there's like no breaks no no rest in between the days so that my tendons and tendons in that heel it's like the customers would not wait I told them to wait and it's like nope can't wait we gotta come. <laughs> uh, so I was like, uh, okay. But then you, I got to the point where I told them, it's like, okay, you can come, but you gotta load it yourself. 
Um, yeah, anyways. Thankfully, I think it wasn't as serious. Like, it still kind of hurts my wrists, but uh, they seem to be healing. So I don't think I caused permanent damage. But uh, yeah, I've definitely had a lot of weird experiences uh, lately. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of cases where it's like, does this really have to happen now while we're doing dealing with all this other stuff, you know? Why now? Why can't I just wait, you know? Uh, like, uh, for example, the, the day of the diagnosis, like, just the worst day ever, right? Uh, there's a limit of two people that could go to the hospital, so it's just my mom and dad that went, and they got stuck at emergency for hours and hours and hours without food and my dad was barely conscious because he needed attention and there's this giant long wait you get the diagnosis and of course it's horrible but then finally they can go home right and just like relax for a bit and what do you know it's during a cold snap that this is all going down and uh while they were at the hospital for so long in emergency uh, their car froze <laughs> the battery on their car so then it's like oh we finally get to go home nope you're still stuck uh, so I had to go and rush over to the hospital with my car and give them a ride home and then the next day it's like I go to pick up their vehicle with a new battery and what do you know my car doesn't start now I'm having car trouble because I cold started my car at minus 30 and now my starter doesn't work so I have to fix my car and then I have to fix their car and oh it's just like just a nightmare sometimes uh they had plumbing issues during all this they um during the funeral yeah this was another crazy thing it, like m an hour before the funeral giant windstorm starts up and what do you know, one of his older buildings that his business self-destructed. <laughs> There's like shrapnel flying all over the place and I had to go over there and like pick it up so that it wouldn't go damage some other uh, business or whatever nearby. And then I had to rush over to the funeral because I was supposed to do the zoom for it. And uh, it's like, yeah, crazy stuff, crazy stuff. I got stuck on the, on the roof yesterday. <laughs> I was trying out uh, uh, a man lift my dad had, and uh, I got up no problem, but I sure didn't want to go down. And it's like, played with the controls for a few minutes, and then finally it just randomly started working, and I got down. It's like, okay, never using that thing again. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, guys, I thought I'd just kind of give you an idea today of like what's been going on, where I've been, because uh, I know you're probably curious. And in a in a weird way, it affects you too because you you know you probably have a routine of watching my videos and you haven't been getting videos, so yeah, um, and it's gonna kind of continue to affect you for a while. <laughs> I hate to say it, but I'm not done with all this stuff. Uh, so I have to liquefy his business. Like that's it's not like something I'm gonna spend like a whole bunch of time on it all at once. It's like gonna be something I work on here and there for for months from this point um now don't worry too much about me either I do have like help like I, I've been getting good support from family and friends uh, lots of lots of nice people to help me out so don't worry too much about old Etho here <laughs> uh and speaking of that my brother is coming to visit very soon so that's probably gonna have a bit of an effect on my free time haven't really seen him in uh, a few years, actually. So his goal is to help out with, like, liquefying the business. And he's going to be working. But I'm sure we're going to hang out and just do fun stuff together, too. Um, and that's good. He's going to be here for a month, I think, two weeks from now. So hopefully I'll still be able to make videos during that. I kind of think I'll be able to sneak some in, but uh, we'll see. <laughs> uh -huh. Anyways... Was that all I was going to say? I thought I had more to say. I probably do. I could go on and on for, about all this stuff for a while, guys. Uh, but I don't want to bore you to death either. Uh-huh. Uh, oh, yeah. And I guess in the future, I should probably say this too. Like, probably won't talk about this stuff a lot in the future. Just uh, not really because I don't want to or like 
it's painful for me to talk about. It's just like I have a idea of what I want my videos to be, and I like to focus more on the game and like uh, enjoying. How do I explain this? I want my videos to be more positive, <laughs> more up upbeat, right? Not like oh. Today, we're going to talk about problems number 56 and 57 on Ito's list. No, no, no. Uh, I kind of want... This is like a abnormal video. Okay? So, in the future, I'll probably just carry on business as usual with our videos and uh, not talk about a lot of this stuff. Anyways, uh, you guys might be thinking, oh man, all that caving? What was the point of that, right? <laughs> what a waste of time. No, 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 no. Guys, come on. Caving, Caving's fun, right? And, uh... It did actually serve a purpose. So, uh, honestly, the reason I went caving is because it's like one of the few things I can do and talk at the same time. <laughs> but we were underneath the mob system here. So we lit up a bunch of caves under the mob system. And that has had a drastic improvement on the rate it's working. Look at this. So many more mobs. Totally worth it. <laughs> There's probably like nine more hours of caving I need to do to, to get this working again. Uh... But it's a start, okay? We, we got a good start there. Uh, there are a couple things I can probably show you guys before we wrap up here today as well. First off, let's head up to... Where should we go? Let's go over here. Okay, so for the longest time here, I've just like had a wheat farm set up here. Like a, one of those uh, smart farms. Is that what they're called? Man, I totally forgot the name. <laughs> I think it's Smart Farm, right? I don't know. It's been so long, guys. Who cares? Uh, yeah, I've been uh, growing weed over here, right? But it's like very out, out in the middle of nowhere, very random. Uh, I figured I want to have a nice place to... Not auto farm. What are they called? Smart Farms. Mini Farm? It's Mini Farm, isn't it? <laughs> Let's go with mini farm. Uh, yeah, we got the the giant wheat farm over here, like the the beautiful plains. We got the windmill. What better place to set up an actual wheat farm than over here, right? So check this out. We go down. Oh yeah, and I think I worked on the windmill too. We never had like an upstairs properly done here. Now we actually do. Or did I do this last episode? I can't. I can't remember. It's been too long. Uh, we go down. Woohoo! <laughs> Remember we got we had those two skelly spawners underneath the windmill I wanted to do something with? Well, we've got something done with them now. Check this out. So we got a light switch. We can check them out. There's one over there. And there's one on the other side full of uh, glow squid as well. Okay, pretty cool, right? We got to shut the lights off though, otherwise they won't spawn. Uh, they come together. They merge together on the on the two sides to the middle here. They go up the water elevators on each side. And then they fall down. They get down to a one-hit kill if they don't have armor on. Two-hit kill if they don't have armor on. <laughs> You're going to use a sword anyway, right? You use a sword and you get a bunch of stuff. Lands in the hoppers. It shoots out, I think, into a water stream there. And then it goes up to some item sorters. Bones end up in this one. We got the boat. The arrows in this one bows in that one and then any extra stuff i think gets voided somehow i forgot how though <laughs> again it's been too long um so then on this side this is where the wheat farm is right over here check this out we i think we got some seeds in here yeah uh i guess i gotta grab some don't i grab the, the wheats flip the farm on sneak in here we just hold right click here let's get that on our bar And it's pretty cool, you know, we got a nice safe place here. I don't have to worry about creepers sneaking up on me anymore, which is good. And the wheat seeds automatically get refilled if we're standing close to this thing. But then, if our inventory fills up, uh, underneath the dirt block there is a hopper mine cart. And it takes the items over to here into an auto sorting system. Wheat goes in there, carrots, potatoes beats anything that doesn't get sorted goes to a composter and turns into bone meal and then we can take the bone meal we get 
from the skelly farm and from this throw it in here and it automatically refills the dispensers with bone meal so it's a pretty cool little system i like it down here it's very cozy <laughs> uh the skelly farm actually works pretty fast because it's a double and get, getting quite a bit of bones from this thing so that's cool and oh yeah and this all works at two times hopper speed i i made sure to get it working fast otherwise it gets to the point where there's so much wheat and seeds that build up here that they just start despawning. Anyways, I think maybe we'll call that the wrap-up point for today. I do have another project that's been in the works. Uh, I've been working on a honey farm, but maybe we'll wait till the next one to check that out. So for today, let's get to the comment of the day. It says, hey, Etho, are you going to do Hermitcraft this season? Excellent question. Uh, yeah, the plan is to do the Let's Play. We're going to try to get back into the modded series. Assuming I, all the technical problems are fixed. <laughs> and uh, then uh, Hermitcraft as well. So th those are the three series I want to keep going. And uh, hopefully start that up soon. Again, I'm going to have a bit of issues with time still. We'll see what we can do. I don't want to force myself. Like, uh, you know, I don't I don't need more stress right now. I, I want to make sure I want to, I enjoy it when I do it. <laughs> Not like force myself to do it even if I don't want to. Uh, so yeah. I'll see what happens here. Hopefully we can get back to, back into things um, going forward. But I do want to say thank you guys for uh, your patience again. I appreciate that. And also for all the well wishes that I've gotten over the, the last few months here. Uh, means a lot to me. And uh, just thanks for watching. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the episode, even if it was a bit of a weird one. And until the next one, take care. Bye-bye.